Welcome, witchlings, to my outside magic room. So I was setting up my altar, and when I was setting it up, I noticed that the lady's altar was just going bananas. This one right here, I have, it's got the drawing of Frigga on it that I made, um, but it was just going bananas. I'm like, okay, you guys got something you want to tell me. So I was like, okay, so I want to make sure that we're going to be fine during the season of Mavon, um, so would you like to protect us? And they wanted to protect us, but they wanted something in return. And I asked them, the thing that they wanted in return was for me to talk about the goddess Hell and kind of like give a whole rundown of uh, kind of all my information that I've learned about her over the years. So that's what I'd like to do with you today. So this won't be as much of a super active video, but a, it's more of a, I guess, a lecture type video. So if you like this style, please leave me a comment so I know, because I know I want to be more like fast paced and in your face and doing stuff all the time. Um, but if you like this kind of video where I just kind of tell you what I know, just keep me in the loop. I'd like to know about that. And make sure you like and subscribe for more videos of the type too. So first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I know about Hell from the, the stories, um, the stories of the Viking lore or Norse mythology. And then after that, I'm going to get more into like my experiences with her because uh, she was very, very helpful to me. So, um, so first, I'm just going to read a real quick passage from the Poetic Edda. I really like this translation by Jackson Crawford um, because he actually goes back to the original text and translates it from the original text as opposed to like a translation from a translation. So, personal recommendation, not sponsored, but hey, Jackson, if you want to hit me up, I'll <laughs> the sponsor, that'd be awesome. But um, but yeah, I'd just like to read a real quick passage. Um, this is from um, Baldur's uh, drama, D-R-A-U-M-A-R, Drama, Drama. I'm not good at these other words, but, um, but it's uh, where Odin is, um, uh, they found out that Baldur had been having really bad dreams. Um, so Odin goes down to hell and asks, um, he brings a, a witch corpse up to life and asks her questions. I am the, Woden says, I am the road tamer, son of corpse tamer. Tell me news from hell and I'll tell you news from above. Whose arrival are these benches draped with straw for? Why is the floor all covered in gold? And the witch that he brought back to life says, the mead is brewed for Baldur's arrival. A shield is placed over the, brew, the fresh brew. All the gods are in suspense. I was forced to speak and now I return to silence. So <laughs> this old lady is so funny because she's always like, don't make me, don't ask me more questions. I want to go back to sleep, the dead sleep. So, um, so I really like that one where she's laying out straw and gold for the arrival of Baldur. The sun, um, the god of like sunlight and brightness, and just what he's like a, the resurrection god, kind of like Jesus is. So she's super excited about his arrival. She wants to take really good care of him, and that's kind of how I feel. Because um, one of the summaries that they have about Hell is basically she's in charge of Hell. That's the land and the name. So she's in charge of Hell um, to kind of keep her out of there because they're very worried about Loki's children. She's a daughter of. Loki and a giantess. So they're really worried about the children being problematic because they tend to be. Um, but hell, she just wants to take really good care of the people who didn't die in battle. Uh, because you know, and those who died in battle get to go to Valhalla, but she takes care of those who died from other things. So I feel like she just is super important to take care of, I'm sorry, I got a kitten chewing my toes. So. <laughs> So I, I feel like since I don't really have any relative who, who actually died in the line of battle, nobody in the military died while in the military, um, that she would be in charge of everybody who I care about and she would be taking good care of them and making sure that they have the meat and they have wonderful things to eat and laying down gold for their arrival maybe too. So she is um, to me like just a wonderful goddess of, of giving love and attention and putting out a bountiful haul for those who I care for who have passed. And lately I've been really focused on ancestry work, so I think it's important right now to think about her because of the, the veil is gonna be lifted in just a couple months here, um, like a month with, with Salin. So I have my, back there, I have the old lady and she kind of represents my grandmother's past and uh, my ancestry tree. 
and I wanted to put out something for Hal, so I put out an apple so that she could make it rot. That's one of the things that I've I've done before. And when I worked with Hal in the past, I put out an apple and like the next day it was rotten and I knew that she was there. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that then. So when I, um, before my current baby Raven, I had been trying to have a baby and I was a couple months pregnant and I had a really horrible miscarriage. Like I passed out, I was like really bad with blood loss. I was really, really poorly and I was really sad about that. So um, when I got pregnant with Raven, I was so worried that I would lose her again too. And I was just full of fear and I was, not in a good place. I was just sick and tired and worried all the time. So I had been asking for a while from Friga if I should work with Hal and she didn't really have much to say, but at that time she actually brought Hal to me and let Hal work with me. So Hal was working with me for a few first few months, um, for a few months there. And then um, I'd put out sacrifices to her. I put out some drink. I put out an apple for her to rot. And um, I was sitting at the altar one day just doing a quick prayer of thanks. And her and Friga both came up behind me. It felt so amazing. So they were behind me. And they each touched my shoulder. And they told me that I needed to check that this baby that was inside of me was okay. They told me I have this little like heart monitor that you can use when your baby's in your womb. They told me to get that and try it out. So I brought it out and I heard Raven's heartbeat and I knew that she was okay. Um, so then after that, Hell left, she walked away. The sacrifice I put out for her d remained unchanged, like it didn't rot anymore. Um, she didn't take the sacrifices anymore. So that was it, that's all she needed to do. <laughs> and I was super thankful of her that she was basically telling me like, I'm in charge of this one, this next one, Freak is in charge of. So, <laughs> so that was really cool. Um, so she took my, my baby that I lost and she's gonna give my, my previous baby something, some wonderful times because he, the ba baby definitely didn't die in battle. So um, so that was, that was my experience with Hal. And I'd like to just thank her again for that memory. Um, so I guess I'll do a little bit about kind of who she looks like. So in, in the sagas, um, Snor Snorly, Snor Snorly, I think is his name, the guy who wrote the, um, not the Poetic Edda, but the, the other one, he wrote that she has a face that's half blue, like half like rotted flesh, and a lot of people have taken that to be rotted flesh. But the original text, like the Poetic Edda, before the translations from Snorly, that those don't really say that she's anything other than just a beautiful goddess. So when I saw her, she didn't look deadish. She she was she was beautiful. She was she had dark hair and pale skin. She was very pale. I guess she's in the underworld, but she was she was beautiful and she was kind of slight, uh, like a, a thin little thing. And she's just kind. Um, so that's my my experience with her. You want to come in here? I'm doing a video. I'm talking about hell. Okay. Hey, my beautiful. Do you know anything about the goddess hell? No. No. Oh, our, other, our baby raven's crying. She should probably go. <laughs> so, oh, that's um. I wanted to dress fancy today for hell, uh, so that I would honor her because I she's gonna honor us when we go. Because I'm not, I don't have any plans on dying in battle, so I probably won't go to Valhalla. So hell can take care of me, <laughs> but but I just love her, and I think this time of year it's super important to get her involved because I'll be able to maybe make more connections with those who have passed, and maybe she'll help them with that connection with me. Thank you, witchlings, for watching me today. Make sure you subscribe. I really appreciate it. I want to just know that you guys want me to keep making videos. Um, I'm really enjoying the process. Are you guys enjoying it? Leave me a comment if you'd like more luxury kind of videos like this one instead of like the more in the moment kind of videos. Um, make sure you ring the bell so you can see more videos like this one. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Oh, pick one of these videos. I got a subscribe link here and I'm going to say here are some videos that you can click on. Click on the next video. <laughs> Come back and watch some more.